It's the old bears and the old bears den of Bigfoot. And tonight we have a story for you that's actually this video will coincide with another one and a live we're doing on Friday night with the author of these these encounters. And uh, I, I want to mention uh, the uh, squatch out we're doing. Uh, the it's called the TTWV. Tennessee, Texas, and West by God, Virginia, Squatch Out on the weekend of Labor Day at the Thunder Rock Campground. You're more than welcome to come on Saturday. Come and join us. Have some fun. Maybe do a little squatching on Saturday night. Sunday, we'll do some presentations from the three channels and... Uh, if you're there early on Sunday morning, say by 10 a.m., I want to have a uh, service. Uh, I'm going to preach. We're going to get my wife to sing a little bit. And uh, if you want to come to that, you're more than welcome to come to. And I hope to get to see a bunch of you there on uh, that weekend. And if you got encounters with Bigfoot, bring them. We're going to videotape you uh, and put your encounters out. Let you tell them like it just happened to you. And no matter how long ago it was or how recent it was, come and tell us about it. We'll put you out on our channel and uh, let everybody know that, hey, these people are real. And they got real encounters. But first, uh, we are going to do this account. It starts out by saying, back in 1987 on a Saturday, my Uncle Jack pulled up to our house early before 7 a.m. He was coming to get me on this day. We were hitting Elmer Davis Lake down in, in near Louisville, Kentucky, he said, we were pulling a sneaky one today, he said. I asked him, okay, where are we fishing today, Uncle? This man had taught me everything about the woods. How to fish, the best knots to tie, and he knew it all. Wasn't nothing he didn't know about hunting or fishing. He had a Ranger bass boat, fully loaded, fish finder and all. The extra four live wells. And uh, out of nowhere, uh, we are entering, in, entering into a father-son tournament today, he said. Here's the thing. Your uncle Big Mike and Little Mike are going to be there too. I got directions from them. He said, we will win this thing, no doubt. He said, all you have to do is catch two. I will do the rest. Later, this would be a heck of a task. As we drove, my uncle started to tell me how he had met my dad and uncle's Mike's, Uncle Mike's, and Rocky while fishing in Beckley, West Virginia. He told me I met them while fishing, and that's how I got introduced to your aunt, Brenda. He, start, he then started to tell me how, when he was young, some things happened to him as a young man while hunting down in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He told me his dad would give him one bullet, one bullet and tell him to go kill something that will feed us. If not, you, your mother, and I will go hungry. A huge, a huge task to be given to such a young man. He said he learned fast, aim small, miss small, and always double check to make sure you're loaded correctly before shooting, or you may not eat. It's the little things he said that you must pay attention to. 
Then he proceeded to tell me how much he knew I had grown to love the woods and fishing. It was only then when he would wake me up to how dangerous the woods really were and I never take the outdoors lightly. He said, the woods will kill you in a split second. One false move, one bad step, one error in judgment, and you're gone. He said, so listen to what I've got to tell you. He then began to educate me on what I on what it was he had gone through out in the woods as a young man. And it would also educate me to what it was I'd seen earlier with my sister when I was eight years old. Right in our hometown on Indian Mound. He began to tell me stories of days and nights in the woods while camping and hunting. He'd a lot of the time feel like eyes were on him quite a bit while being out there in the wilderness. He said some nights, he recalled some nights of hearing wild sounds mixed in with the coyotes, but louder, way louder, intimidating loud, rattle your chest loud, make your hair stand up on the back of your arms and neck. He recalled times of being out in Beaver Creek just outside of Beckley, West Virginia, and while fishing, having rocks thrown at him, almost as if he it were a warning sign for him to leave, get out of there, he said. So he did. I put my head down and walked straight out to the straight out of the woods. Now this later would hit me like a ton of bricks. I had the same same thing happen only a few years later. While at Todge Creek, fishing out in the middle of a creek waist high in water. It was at this time we realized we were lost and had been given the wrong directions by my Uncle Mike and Uncle Jack. Uncle Jack said they must have done it purposefully. And they got me on this one. Don't matter. We will still win that trophy. You just watch, Junior. We pulled into this farmer's driveway and asked for directions. There was a dingy colored pond in his backyard by the barn. My uncle asked the man if there were any big ones in that pond. The old man replied, yeah, a couple good ones, but the biggest one is about 35-pound shovelhead catfish. It's a good-sized cat. My uncle then asked, can I, fish, uh, can I fish it for a few minutes just so we can stretch our legs a bit? We've driven from Ohio. The old man says, sure, go ahead, go on ahead. Uncle Jack looks at me and says, give me 30 minutes, Junior. We will still get there and win that trophy. I replied and said, go on and get him, Uncle. He walks down, throws a big bluegill and throws it off a surf rod right next to the air pump that was pushing water to keep the pond with plenty of oxygen. Oxygen. Fifteen minutes later, fifteen minutes later, he look. He hooks that big fish and begin brings him in. The old man saying, "Well, I'll be darned." My uncle said, well, I fish for a living. What did you all expect? Laughing out loud. Let's go, Junior. We got a tournament to go win. We get in and he thanks the old man and we're on our way. Now back to the woods, he said. Listen, Junior, if you're ever in the woods and you feel eyes are on you, leave. Put your head down. 
and walk straight out. Don't stop until you're out. He said, I've been in some tight spots myself. That's why I'm telling you this stuff. I'm teaching you, he said. I've been hunting at night and have had things stalk me. I've had them stalk me in the day, almost as if they were making every move I made mocking me, he said. I've had times where I've heard growls, howls in the daytime and nighttime as well. Super close to me sometimes. I end up in a tree with my 30 rifle, scared to death. He said, always just be on the defensive while you're out in any stretch of the woods. You know the rumors, the stories we've all told you. Well, we told you for a reason. They're true. He said, your dad, your Uncle Mike, and your Uncle Rocky know it too. They've been with me hunting. They've seen the shadows of them. They've been close as well. We just respect them. And we never try to hunt them. These woods are theirs. They were here before us, before the Indians. So it's their... It's their woods. He said to respect them. All the while, I was thinking, this is so cool. I thought to be having this conversation with my uncle. We finally pull up to Elmer Davis Lake near Louisville, Kentucky. It was now raining lightly, a slow breeze picking up as well. We dropped the Ranger bass boat into the lake and we're off fast, ripping through the water, looking for a cove to get out of the wind. We find a cove and dip inside and set anchor and start started to fish. We caught a couple each and we're in the race. Then off to the next cove, close to the weigh-in table. Cause, because we were late, we couldn't go too far, so we stayed as close as possible so we could make it to weigh-in on time. Because my Uncle Mike, everyone had a couple hour head start on us as it stood, so we had to fish fast. They didn't realize they'd put my Uncle Jack into his comfort zone. He was used to fishing under the gun, having a short amount of time to do the most damage. He felt like he was in his comfort zone. He kept on saying, dumb butts. Don't understand. They really gave me the ads for trying to cheat cheaters. Never win, Junior. Cheaters never win, Junior. Remember that too, kiddo, as he laughed, catching bass after bass. The weather was nasty. The breeze had picked up at this time, and we were in a cove thick with forest and a ridge that sat in behind the woods that slowly climbed up to about a 1,000 feet. We were getting close to weigh-in time, and we were sure we had caught enough bass to win the tournament. So we started to talk again when we were having it earlier. My uncle told me, I know your love of the woods is just like mine, Junior. You just got to be safe while you're in there, armed or not. Even more if you're not armed, he said which it won't matter because of things we'd been talking about. He said, if they come for you, there's no gun that's going to help you. Maybe with everything else in the woods, a gun will help you, but not those creatures. He said, their kids are as big as we are, and the adults are way bigger. So a bullet won't phase them. One of the others will get you if you shoot one of theirs. You won't make it out anyway. I've been preaching that all along. If you don't know what you're doing, you ain't going to make it out. Uh, 
Uncle Jack said, just pay attention to your surroundings and you should be okay. It was this time when our hair stood up on both of our necks, thick in the woods. We sat in a boat in the water. We felt a wild kind of presence. Hmm. Getting to the good part. Very wicked, intimidating feeling overwhelmed us both. Then all of a sudden we hear a howl come out all from off the ridge up above us in the cove we were fishing. The wind carrying it out loudly. This wasn't from a coyote and no wolves were in this area. See, he said, see what I mean? Them things are everywhere. He said this while he was starting the motor to the boat. Time to get us out of this cove, he said, as the rain started to pour down and the wind cranked up. As we started to drive away, another loud howl came out from off the ridge of the wood, in the woods again. Scared us both. We looked at one another. As he said, see, this is what I've been trying to tell you all along. How fast that just happened. What would you do if you were in the middle of the woods? At night, in the snow, in a tree, and he laughed. Wow. He said, what a day now. Let's go win this tournament. We pulled in only to see Big Mike and Little Mike as well. Oh, y'all made it. Mike said. Well, yes, Uncle Jack replied, and I bet a hundred bucks would beat all y'alls and take first. Uncle Mike says I'm going to take that bet. We weigh in first. 27 pounds, five bass limit. No one came close. We won by seven pounds. Took the first place trophy. Dad was so... Father and Son Tournament at Elmer Davis Lake. And Uncle Jack won an extra $100. Got your gas money back, I say, as I laugh. Uncle Mike was so mad he was cherry red. What a day, Uncle Jack says. As we get in the truck and you got on-the-spot education about Sasquatch, too, kiddo. Don't ever forget anything that I told you. I'm telling you because you spent a lot of time in the woods, so one day you may put this information to use. Well, I absolutely would have to use everything he told me because I would have another encounter not long after the tournament. At Todd's Creek and a nightmare of Tom's Mountain would shortly follow after that. It was like I was being prepared all along the way for what was to come next. My being an only surviving identical twin from birth, I thought it was having a huge impact on how my life would go. And there was no doubt in my mind, it was a very unique experience for me. Later giving me my ideas after my tell-all for the first book I would write. I have just finished Blessed and Cursed, my tell-all book about every incident and encounter in life, and it's been accepted for publishing by Page Publishing. So, and he goes on to say, I'm just glad I'm doing my part to educate the world about what I've seen and learned about Sasquatch. From my family, as well as I have over 50 years experience in the woods, hoping to educate some of the naysayers as well on this subject. Sincerely, JDL. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there goes to illustrate 
but they're near Louisville, Kentucky, a major city here in the east. It's a big city in Kentucky. You got Louisville, you got Cincinnati as big cities in Kentucky. Well over half a million people are through them. In a day's time, the large cities, not too far from the big cities is where Bigfoot's at because there's people there. It's easy food. And they're out fishing on a lake just outside of Louisville. And they run into, they're fishing. And a Bigfoot screams at them in the daytime. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like this one. And um, come and join us on the 23rd for a live show with the gentleman gentleman that wrote this he sent it to me in my email you can send your your things that your stories into me too you're not going to be laughed at you're not going to be mocked and if somebody does i'll come down on them hard i don't let that happen to the to people that come and tell me their story or tell me their account uh, of of seeing bigfoot or a dog man i don't do that it, that's that's ridiculous why do we do that why do we always got to constantly go after the people that are bringing the truth? Why don't we go after the ones that are not bringing truth out? Why don't we go after the ones that are keeping things hid from us? Let's start doing that. Yeah, and I'm talking about the politicians. I don't care what party you're with. I don't care if you're Republican Democrat, Libertarian, whatever party you're affiliated to. Go after the politicians. They're the ones that are causing the trouble. We need to go after them. Make them come out and tell the truth. We're telling it here on this channel. And I expect that we should be going after them. That's just my personal opinion. They're lying to us about these creatures, about Bigfoot, about dogmen, werewolves, all these cryptids that are out there. They're not telling us anything. Let's go after them. Go after your local politician. And then work your way up to the senators and, and the representatives in the House of Representatives and the President of the United States, they're hiding stuff from us, people. Shouldn't be doing that. We have the power in this country. They do not. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you got something out of it. And we'll see you on the next one. The next one will come out a few days after this one. And then Friday night we're going to have a live event. Hope to see all of you there. Bye, guys.